بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا Nowadays in that direct conflict between people of the Haqq we find people in that conflict declaring war against Islam against the Quran, the book of Allah against the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam against Ahl al-Tawheed and I was surprised to hear some of them start to speak out from those Shia Rafida attacking scholars of Islam from the Salaf until one of them he came out publicly declared that is Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he declared Sheikh al-Islam to be Kafir Wahhabi I was surprised to hear that many times nowadays from those, those who claim to be claim to be Muslims from Sunnis who are really declaring war against Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and many other Sheikhs from the ulama of the Salaf like those called themselves Habashis and co therefore who is Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah if I want to speak about that great Imam Rahimahullah I think I'm not going to be able to give that man his rights in short really summary or in a small talk people talk about him in books and volumes of books pay thousands of pages spoke about his life and that is not the reason myself I want to address the issue with you tonight but I found it's very important Nowadays, when we see people attacking Islam and attacking the main figures or leaders, like attacking the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions and the Tabi'een and Tabi'i Tabi'een and those who follow them from the ulama of the Salaf, I find myself it's very important to give that great Imam some summaries in order for all of us to, re to remember whom we are talking about Imam al-Zahabi rahimahullah obviously he spoke about Ibn Taymiyyah and he said Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah is bigger than somebody like me to describe him and who is the one who is saying that? The main historian, the main historians, you know, of the one who write the histories of Islam, Imam al Zahabi, he said he's bigger. He said, Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, bigger than somebody like me to describe him. And if I give off in Mecca, between the Rukun and the Maqam, I will give oath and I said I never saw in my eyes anybody like him because he was living in his time and his era and anybody study the seerah of Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he knows this man he was by himself Ummah from his childhood he carried that title he carried that really strong personality strong listen well sharp mind his ideas and thought and emotions and actions all of them more together and walk together in order to serve Islam and serve the Muslims it's been described Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah in the book was known as Al-Uqud Al-Durriya or Al-A'lam Al-Aliya which so spoke about 
we see the seerah and the life of Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. They was really speaking about, from his childhood, he wake up and open his eyes about remain of Ummah start to be fragmented and Kuffar are really occupying the Muslim land and the Tatarian with their army invade the Caliphate, the Abbasid Caliphate. He was living from his childhood with that problem. So he see in his eyes all how the Tatarian army was coming and attacking the Khilafah and destroying itself the capital of the Khilafah of Baghdad and burning all the Islamic library there and how the crusaders came with them as well and take around the whole area how the crusaders occupied you know Damascus and went all the way to Palestine from that day and from his young age Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Kari concern about the for the Ummah keep you know sad thinking about the way forward thinking about the way we should really you know should this Ummah follow in order to come out of this dark tunnel on this really very deep hole of decline and destructions he thinking day and night what cause that Ummah to be declined? What caused that great nation who inherited from the previous generations from the time of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and Tabi'i Tabi'een the bright history and the golden period of Islam how it came down to the level the Crusaders and the Tatarian come all the way to Muslim land and occupy directly and kill and slaughter thousands of thousands of Muslims what happened? He discovered Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah because something occurred in the aqidah of this Ummah. Some superstitions, some stories, some storyteller, some illusions in the mind of those who study theologies and those who start to speak about all those science of theologies and without even to go back to the divine text they start to study ilmul kalam they start to follow blindly madhahib he found them completely fragmented to different sects and different groups fighting each other in the name of madhab which they know fragmented the whole ummah and make it so easy for the enemies to attack it and come from all over from his own young age He's been described to be shrewd, to be clever, and to be a person who is, you know, steady, spending effort holding to the robe of Allah, stick to the sunnah, preoccupied himself in seeking ilm throughout his childhood up to the teenage. And he was a person who been described by Imam al hatim Al-Bazzar he said about him Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah from his young age up to his teenage exhausting utmost of effort and his time in studying and studying reading the Quran and reading the Tafsir of Quran reading the Hadith and study Ilm al-Hadith reading the Fuqh and study the Fuqh and Usul al-Fuqh study the Arabic language until he start to study any science related to the Sharia of Islam until he was really well qualified in all topics of Sharia to the level he left no science no arts of the Sharia arts and no science of the Sharia science except he study it and write about it until he learned he earned the title Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah and he become what? he become so skillful in his own debate and discussion he sat on the majalis of the ulama he listened because he got to ear and one mouth he spent more time in listening than talking and that is a sign of somebody who want to learn the Sharia from his childhood he used his two ears because he need more to hear and listen
and let his mouth later on. But some people, subhanallah, they close their own ears and they want to listen from their own nose and they will never be able to listen. But their own mouth never stop talking even before they're listening. And this is a problem when somebody, too early he wants to become what? He wants to become Sheikh al-Islam. But you know, Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, from his childhood, studying, accompanies and make musahaba to ulama, and reads books after books, especially from those ulama who knows are the people who correct the who collect the correct hadith and follow the Hajj Salaf. 